Today I'm going to show you how to make a chainsaw birdhouse, but this is no birdhouse like you've ever seen before. So to start with our birdhouse, we're going to have to find a, a suitable tree. This tree right here is a beautiful, probably about 150 year old Douglas fir. It is uh, not doing very well. It's kind of got some disease in it, some sickness. And so this is a tree that I'm going to turn into a habitat snag. So I don't necessarily do this on a live healthy tree. Uh, just by opening it up, as we're going to do, it will have a, a tendency to allow bugs to get in and it could damage the and leave a pretty grim future for the tree. But this one here, knowing it's going to be a habitat snag, is a perfect candidate. So the very first thing we want to do is to pick a suitable location in our tree uh, for our uh, birdhouse. We want to find a place where the bark is, is pretty uniform, kind of flat. It's going to make it a little bit easier for a hinge and for our door. And you can use a scr scribe or a sharpie just to give yourself a reference here. But I'm going to go, I'm just going to take my sharpie here and kind of draw this out when I get my chainsaw going, that'll help me. Goggles. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is get our hinge, our screws, and a small fine woodworking chisel. So the chisel I'm going to use, this is, of all my chisels, this is one of my favorite ones. I got this off of eBay. This is a Simon's, uh, about a, I think it's about a half inch chisel, maybe five eighths or so, and I made this, this handle on it. made it a long handle, and I like uh, having a couple chisels like this with long handles. It just gives you a... Uh, it kind of has that timber framing feel, you know, having that leverage and to be able to get both hands on it is uh, nice. I don't know that I'd want all my chisels to be this length, but I really do enjoy having a couple like this. So as far as the hinge goes, this is just your garden variety, something you can find at your local lumber yard. You probably have something you can scavenge around the house, but make sure that it's all solid brass. Now this next bit, it's kind of important you do this in the order uh, that I'm showing you here. It'll really uh, make your life a lot easier. Now. We're gonna, what we're essentially gonna do is just to build a little door here. I'm gonna try to maintain, or try to keep that bark 
And uh, by leaving it in here, we've got a nice uh, secure surface that we can work on. It's not we're gonna try to hold it, keep it steady. But what I'll do is just take your time here and what we're gonna do is try to carve a, somewhere in the middle, a little flat spot. Just don't get any hurry here. And what we want to do is, with, because this bark is so uneven and the hinge surface is so flat, we want to make sure that it fits in here nicely. Centered on there. I've used two hinges before. One hinge is a little bit simpler if you have a wide one like this. So just take your chisel there and mark these. We don't want to overcut this. We want it to look as as natural as possible. To look like somebody did it who really cared. Now depending on how good of a job you did with your chainsaw, you might need to go back and revisit this. You can see here, I'm too deep here, not deep enough right there, I actually didn't do a very good job there. So we'll fire up the chainsaw one more time and very carefully start to clean this out. I'll put some scar marks in here, maybe even some cross hatch hatches to help chisel this piece out. So this right here is what I did not want to see. I don't know, it seems like that's always the case when you start second guessing yourself and you go back in there, mess around, then you get these cut. That doesn't look very nice. It shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened, but it saw got away from me a little bit and you know, lesson learned. So let's uh, chunk the rest of this out with our uh, big chisel. I mentioned I was gonna put some cross hatches in there. I just kind of forgot about it. You can do that, but I think if we're, don't get greedy and just work here kind of, slowly here we should be able to pop this out of here we just don't want to mar the edge of that bark too much if it starts becoming uh, resistant then we'll just uh, chunk it out with the chisel and the mallet finish up our door. See our door here is too thick and it's going to uh, take up all the space inside of the inside of the birdhouse. So we want to strip off this uh, sap wood here and just leave the bark. Now if you have a, I don't know what type of tree you might be using, but using Doug fir you can see half the thickness of this is the bark itself. 
Uh, this is just the nature of these trees. If you have a different type of tree where the bark is thinner, you'll have to leave some of the wood. So this is actually really simple uh, wood to work with. So what I'll do is we'll just take your time here and don't get in any hurry. And I want to split that bark off of the um, sapwood. A little tool that I have uh, I've late really fallen in love with is this little Grand Forks Brooks um, hand hatchet. Uh, when I first started or messing around with it, I thought, oh, that's kind of cute. It was kind of a novelty. But I found that in this small work, this little detail stuff, it's one of the finest, most useful and delightful to use tools that I have ever had. I cannot think of a better gift to someone, a loved one for a birthday or for Christmas, than to receive one of these. It is a beautiful little tool. It comes with a really special sheath. You can see that uh, Grand Force is really proud of these because they put a lot of detail into them that you don't see on the other axe, some of the other axe, axes or hatchets. They have uh, put a lot of effort into this little sheath. It covers the back there. It's got their uh, logo had burnt into the handle, but isn't that uh, a beauty and so useful if you like to be out in the woods and bushcrafting and do small things I just can't think of a finer tool That's just so ergonomic and so wonderful just a pleasure to use than this little hatchet So now we're ready to secure the door to the uh, hinge now we don't want that to push in, we're going to do something about that here in a minute, but just for uh, sake of uh, helping us out, I'll just use some of the scraps that I had there to kind of build a stop. So we can, I can have something to push against here. So we want to create a little stop so this doesn't push in and, and stress the hinges. So I'll just use a little piece of scrap that I chunked out here and we'll screw that up to the top. So I'll measure this with my chisel, just kind of roughly, it doesn't be perfect, and mark this and cut it to length. So we can take our bit and brace now, and uh, I, I'm not a, not a birder, I don't understand all the ways of birds, but I know that if you drill a one inch hole, they seem to like that. So that keeps the bigger birds out. I don't know what the ideal is, but this I've had real good luck with a one inch hole. Having that stop is also really helpful. Now we can have something we can kind of push against without worrying about breaking our hinge. So I'll just take my one inch hole in the perfect location, I'm not sure. I kind of tend towards the top there a little bit. We'll just go right here.
so that's it for the uh, chainsaw birdhouse. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is this bottom cut when you're cutting it. Make sure you come in with your chainsaw at a bit of an angle so that anything inside, moisture or water or waste from the birds, will, will work itself out. You don't want it cut back in where it can get damp and be unhealthy for the birds. I put this little keeper on here just, uh, just to keep it secure. Maybe it might keep an animal from opening up or even the wind from blowing it up. But I've yet to make one of these uh, that I didn't have little birds nesting in them uh, in the first, uh, the first year. So there's a pretty, pretty good sized curve around the edge there from the chainsaw. That really can't be helped. But they seem to kind of just stop it up with grass and feathers and such. And uh, it doesn't seem to bother them a bit. But they, uh, they always seem to really like it. It's inevitable there's going to be those that, that uh, question, you know, why go to all the trouble of, of, of doing, doing a birdhouse like this? And uh, I guess my answer to that would be it, uh, you're building memories. Usually uh, Jack and I, we do this together. Uh, he's not feeling well today, so he couldn't come out here and do it. But um, I can't tell you the, the, the memories that are made and the joy uh, we get uh, when people come to the homestead or just go, go out as a family, open this up and see those little blue eggs in there or the little birds in there. Um, it just is something you'll just never forget. So it's worth doing. It is to me. I guess if you have to ask that question, then I think you probably have a lot to learn about what life's really all about. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.